I know it was tough. It was tough. So I just wanted to be there for you. Press Corps. Hey, welcome to our space. For those of you who have not been here, um, hopefully it is agreeable. Uh, and uh, do we think we have everybody here? Okay. Um, I, uh, I am here to address and put to rest uh, in large measure, I think, something, an issue that for the last couple of days has been, um, I think, something that has been uh, foremost in, the, in press coverage. Uh, and that has been assertions and speculation uh, about the identity of <coughs> a poster to NOLA.com who used the term or used the identifier Henry L. Mencken, 1951. Um, and I will read the statement that I just issued to you all in order to be very precise and as accurate as possible and I think make a couple of comments and then hopefully take, try to take some questions from you all, um, begging your indulgence to understand that there, when these internal processes occur, there's a limited amount that we can say about them. <clears throat> On Tuesday, March 13, 2012, following press account of a legal filing in Orleans Parish Civil District Court, Assistant United States Attorney Sal Perricone acknowledged and revealed for the first time to us that he has in fact been the sole user of the NOLA.com identifier Henry L. Mencken 1951. Now I think it's important to clarify for the record and for you the members of the press and the public that contrary to speculation in those filings and based upon the information and belief that we have, 
neither Assistant United States Attorney Jim Mann nor anyone in the United States Attorney's Office authored or participated in or had knowledge of the formulation or posting of those Henry L. Mencken 1951 comments by Sal Pericone. It's also important to note that the course of conduct, because there are a lot of postings here, the course of conduct resulting in those Henry L. Mencken 1951 comments by the AUSA was not known to or authorized by myself or this U.S. Attorney's Office prior to the filing and subsequent acknowledgement on March 13. Now, upon learning of the Henry L. Mencken 1951 comments by AUSA Perricone, the U.S. Department of Justice in Washington was notified. I did that personally. Uh, in fact, I called and I contacted uh, very, very high levels of DOJ almost immediately upon learning this. That matter's also been referred to the Office of Professional Responsibility in accordance with regulations in the department, and they will proceed in accordance with their regulations and protocol. And further, AUSA Perricone has been recused from handling all matters which were discussed in the NOLA.com comments. Uh, these are standard time-tested procedures that we followed in matters like this. Uh, now, you know, our duty to the public we serve is paramount. It's more important than anything. Uh, and we in the U.S. Attorney's Office, I can assure you, assure the public we serve, are going to continue in our unrelenting efforts to fight corruption, violent crime, the drug trade that fuels that violent crime, civil rights abuses, and any of those individuals who threaten our citizens, threaten our quality of life, threaten our public safety. Uh, we also note that we recognize the absolute duty of all U.S. Attorney's Office personnel to refrain from publicly commenting on any pending matters pending before the department except in strict accordance with established DOJ and U.S. Attorney's Office policies, procedures, and guidelines. I, uh, I want to thank the department. I want to thank the Deputy Attorney General. I want to thank uh, a lot of people I've spoken to with the Department of Justice over the last couple of days in order to make sure this is addressed by the numbers in, the, in a way that, that makes certain that our office and everything we do is above the fray, is in keeping with DOJ guidelines and the highest ethical standards, and most importantly, I think, in keeping with the expectations of the people we serve out there and you, the press, whose trust we, we so desperately want and work for. I want to thank my own staff, certainly on my management staff, um, my upper management staff, who's worked very hard under very difficult circumstances, again, making sure that all of the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted uh, and that uh, this process gets resolved fairly. Uh, and certainly I want to thank uh, my secretary and my, my own support staff because it's, it's been a lot of work for a lot of couple of days uh, or during the last couple of days. Um, I'm going to try to throw it out there to questions to you all. Understanding, like I said, please I'll repeat, um, because this matter has been placed in the hands of OPR and because OPR will have to do an investigation, which we do not want to interfere with, a fair investigation, a thorough investigation, I can't really say much. What okay. kind of potential damage does this do to any cases that you guys have won in the past? You've blogged about a lot of things, from, from Rose Jefferson to Canal Street brothel, the potential that any grand jury testimony or, or stuff that only you were privy to may have been leaked on a social media site. You know, it's certainly our hope and belief that there's no damage done to any, any, any cases in the past that we've handled. You know, Sal Perricone is a very fine uh, veteran attorney uh, who, who, knows the, uh, who knows the restrictions and, and, and laws under which we operate. Uh, I, it is my hope and belief that no actual cases, the outcome of no cases, uh, of, of any cases will be, uh, will be affected. Beyond that, I've got to tell you, I, you know, 
I can't speculate and shouldn't speculate and shouldn't offer any opinions about because, you know, there's a lot of postings out there, you know. And so it would be inappropriate for me, and I think I would potentially interfere with, the, with a fair investigation if I were to speculate about, you know, which postings, if any, may have had effect, no effect, whatever. Uh, suffice it to say that it is certainly our hope that, uh, that none of our, uh, of our cases, our achievements, will be adversely affected by this. Were you upset at some of the posts speaking directly about you? My, my hide's pretty thick. I, 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 I worry, I don't worry about me. I, uh, I'm just, you know, in, in terms of my emotional reaction to these things, my concern, my only concern, my overriding concern is maintaining, is dealing with this crisis, this issue properly, dealing with it honestly, trying to get some kind of message out to you all and the public that we serve that helps to keep the trust you've placed in us. Um, my main concern is making sure that this, that everything we have done in response to this is done, uh, I think, with the, with the highest standards in mind, and that we just do it right. Uh, at the end of the day, that's that's what really counts. What changed what you did with the You know, it's it's. I really shouldn't enumerate right now because I'm, I'm sure there's there's a number that he uh, that he commented on. But but basically, any investigation. And remember, this is it's it's this is a, an awkward place to be because we are not. Even though there has been reporting on alleged investigations, on many of those investigations. Uh, or that have been that have been claimed in reports, we're not even in 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 a, in a, uh, a position where we can confirm or deny the existence of those. Sometimes uh, uh, in investigations are are assumed or or reported on by virtue of cases that we bring or guilty pleas or whatever. So I think it would be a very slippery slope right now for me to try to enumerate those things that ha Sal has worked on that he's being. Uh, recused from. Suffice to say that anything he commented on, any case he may have commented on, any pending case or any investigation, he is removed from those. He is recused from those. So is he still in trial, do you think? I... Because that's been out there. He was in trial. We just, well, we just had a successful, a very successful conclusion this morning with a, uh, with a favorable ruling, a resounding favorable ruling about the appropriateness of our attorney's conduct in that, in that case. Um, what we're going to do moving forward, again, everything's going to be driven by whether he commented on those cases, and that's all I can say. Mr. Matt, follow up to that? I'm, yes. When did you learn that South Carolina was the blogger? And given that timetable, why was he allowed to participate in this hearing this morning that clearly involved matters that he blogged about? That's a, that's a good question because he, we learned that he was the blogger uh, as I said in this, in writing here, um, that's feedback from somebody's machine. I apologize. Okay. I'll try. <laughs> I'll, let me try that again. Um, I learned, we learned in my office when I, when I asked him shortly after we learned of this, and he acknowledged, as I said in this, on Tuesday, Tuesday, midday, whatever it was, right at, shortly after I learned as a result of press accounts, Sal Perricone readily acknowledged that he, in fact, was Henry L. Mencken, 1951. That was the bright line. That was when we learned that. Now, in order to decide what he was recused from or whatever, he had two processes going. First of all, he was already literally on the verge of and prepared for an involved hearing in that case that had to go forward while he's preparing for that hearing, and it's already pretty much, there's a lot of momentum there. We believed, and I take responsibility for this, that it was appropriate in this, for the sake of judicial economy for him and Jim Mann uh, to continue with that hearing, let that hearing complete itself, and then, uh, then, go f and, and then proceed with whatever recusals are necessary thereafter. So, it was a, to be honest with you, I think an intelligent, pragmatic decision that I will stand behind. It would I think not necessarily damage the case. No. Would no. It, and you know, you can trust this blog. He blogged yesterday morning after he, in fact, came out to you. I mean, <clears throat> did you guys tell him to 
stop or was that him I think he was just being reckless with this because there was a blog news person at six fifteen yesterday morning about this topic. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I, I will I will not com I don't want to prejudice him or the process to talk about what my opinion was about that blog, that late blog that came out simply saying I'm still here and et cetera. Um, suffice to say there was no comment on any cases uh, and that was the last you heard from it. Um, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to share my personal reaction to that. Yeah. I have them though. Yeah, Paul. Sorry, did he ask him if he had blogged under any other name previously or even currently? I can't. The, the issue before us right now is Mankin. I should not speculate about whether he may have blogged under any other names or anybody else for that matter um, because quite frankly that would be part of an internal investigation and it would be inappropriate for me to begin broadening my inquiry to beyond whether or not it was him because once we, we determine it's appropriate to turn this, these things over to OPR in order for this to be a fair process we shouldn't do anything we have to, again, we have to stay within protocol. So the notion that the possibility or whatever is about whether or not he may have blogged any other names is something that is for, for that office to determine for another process. And that's also, yes. that denial also applies to other people who may have done things that have nothing to do with us. Meaning, there's just, you have to look at this manual. Yes. I mean, this is, the only thing before us is, I mean, I get, look, I get hit the other day. We get hit with. Uh, an allegation, a story about Mencken in the context of comments on cases and things like this. We have to focus like a laser on that to determine what the situation is, if it was accurate, if it was true, deal with that. And then the, 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 uh, these other issues uh, are other things entirely. Could you tell us on the show any more so we can grab Jeff and both of them afterwards? Let me, yeah. Hold on. Listen, listen. I'll, get, I'll get to you both. Trust me. I'll, yeah. I don't want to prejudice. Let me tell you, Sal is a professional and readily acknowledged his 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 conduct. Um, I think it would be inappropriate for me to characterize his, his what, what his emotional display was, but he was extremely forthright and professional uh, in his acknowledgement to me, and I think uh, that's that's probably as much as I can say. Yes, sir. Um, we have reminded, actually very recently, we reminded our staff, you know, th these, look, I'm going to, I probably feel more at home with you all than, than maybe I should, I don't know, but I'm going to think out loud. These um, First Amendment rights are delicate things, so you have to be careful that we make sure that our people are mindful of their obligation not to tread on professional matters, official matters in their blogs, while at the same time not stepping on their individual rights to, 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 to blog or, or comment about just things in an innocuous way, stamp collecting or, 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 or sports or whatever. So yes, to that extent, our troops have been reminded that they must, in all of their communications, as I said here, we, they recognize and we've reminded that their absolute duty to refrain from publicly commenting on any pending matters before the department except in strict accordance with, with well-established principles. That acknowledgement by us that our people know this came with a reminder to them, of course. I think that makes sense that we did that. Yeah. My, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I, there is no suspension. There is no, the, 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 any discipline, if any, will be meted out as a result of, of the conclusion of any internal investigation. No, I mean, I can't comment. I, I, I should not comment on the content of any of these, of any of these, uh, these opinions. Um, there, were, there, were, there was a broad range of, of, of subject matter about which he commented, uh, including, I think, as one of your, your brethren mentioned, you know, myself. Um, there is, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to be the judge because I'm his employer and I work very closely with him. I'm not going to be the judge of, in this case, 
what was appropriate, what was inappropriate. I think it's only fair to him, but just and fair to the people and fair to the department to allow that process, because it does work uh, to run its course. Did the mayor reached out to you at all? Has the mayor reached out to you to talk to you about this issue? No, he hasn't. I mean, Mitch, I'll tell you, Mitch and I talk probably on, the, on average about once a day about all kinds of pressing matters. Uh, he, is, he has not called me about this, um, and uh, I don't, you know, I don't know whether he will or not. Uh, but I think my responses to him would be the same as they would to you. As a boss that you were with before, yeah. how personally did it affect you having this conversation? You know, that's a for me to start expressing personal opinions about my depth of, of, of disappointment uh, is is a dangerous place to go. I think, um, you know, certainly standing before you here. You know, I'm normally giving you what we believe to be is really good news and, and news of our achievements. I think we have an obligation to share with you uh, as much as we can when things don't go well and when there are shortcomings and when we, we, we do have, uh, when missteps occur. Uh, you know, other than to say that, you know, this is not a happy thing for me. Um, this is something that I feel we have to make right by doing it by the strictest protocol in the most honest, transparent way we can to the best I can do. I, I, I'm going to, but I'm going to refrain from sharing my, my innermost thoughts because to be honest with you, I can't let my emotional response to these things dictate how I deal with them uh, because only, only without, without, without being interfered with by emotions, I think only then can I make honest judgment calls with a cool head and make sure that, that, uh, that these matters are resolved really fairly. I'm, what we want more than anything is to keep the trust of the citizens and you, the press corps. Would it be safe to say that you're fighting your emotions? That we're what? Fighting my fighting no, I'm not, I don't think I'm fighting off my emotions. I just, I just try and do things by the, you know. Have you determined what computer or computer that the sheriff will use to send these messages? We have not. That's not, you have to remember, any of these, these questions are good ones, but they are questions that we're not prepared to answer because these would be questions that would be answered by the folks who come in and do whatever investigation they do. What about, you commented on yes, some judges yeah. and, you know, calling one highly deplorable. Is there any concern from you about judges that he had that were put there before and, and continue his job and how that could affect his office? First of all, you know, without without commenting on the comments, um, I'll tell you something. We, and I'm not saying this gratuitously. Notwithstanding whatever was opined about, you know, personal comments or, or monikers appended to different judges and whether rulings and things like this, we've got one of the best benches in the world. And I'll tell you, the the judges here, as they are in the federal bench, are tremendous. They are highly professional. And as much as we avoid at all cost, and because you know we do not criticize judges, it's it's something we just don't do. Well, what I'm saying is, um, they these judges we depend on these judges and we trust them to rule in accordance with the law, whatever misstep might be out there by anybody on the prosecution side or defense side. So I'm and I'm counting on that because they're they're a good bench and they're good judges. So you're counting on them. I'm not asking for anybody to overlook. I, I, I've seen incredible professionalism there, and that's what they're going to get from us continued, and that's what we're going to, I think, we'll get from, from them as well. Would this be official from D.C. to you on the ground investigating your office? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. When I say investigating my office, remember, whenever we call in OPR, and I've got to tell you, look, I've, I've self-reported over the years. Everybody has. Anytime something happens, you, you ask OPR sometimes to investigate to clear, clear things up. Um, it is a normal part of the, of the world we live in. Uh, it is a normal part of our structure. They are our internal mechanism, and they are very thorough. And, yeah, they, they will send people, if they deem it appropriate, to come down, do interviews, whatever they have to do to, uh, to get a resolution and put these things to rest, yeah. Could that potentially constitute a crime and lead to their indictment? You know, I'm not going to. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to speculate about – I mean, these, again, these are great questions, but I, I'm, I'm not one to speculate about what the outcome could be. Simply that that it's going to be a, it's going to be a fair process. Here it is, I have one you can answer. So where is the, the prohibition on people from your office making comments on judges? Is it in an internal manual? How can I get reminded? Is it in the form of a memo? Where is the prohibition? 
There are, there are everything from U.S. Attorney Manual provisions to internal DOJ policies that, of course, and, and not to mention um, uh, bar rules that have, that address things like commenting on cases. Without getting into particulars, all of our folks know that commenting on ongoing cases are not things you're supposed to do. So beyond that, that we, that we do have a highly structured environment in which we know we're not supposed to comment on ongoing cases, that's, that's as much as I can say without delving into the specifics of the thing. You've heard a little bit of a public spot, and I understand where you're going, but there are going to be people out there, the media, but they're probably already talking about this, they're going to make the allegation that this was uh, essentially a prosecutor who was trying to defame people who he was investigating <coughs> and possibly painting a jury pool, uh, essentially using this as, as a tool of leverage, using social media outlets as a tool to, I guess, get an advantage on a criminal suspect. Is it unfortunate if, if that's what people are thinking today, tonight, tomorrow, that somebody used this as kind of a scheme or a tool to help themselves in the prosecutor's office? I'll generally try to respond. It is always unfortunate when there is even the appearance whatever the reality, whether there's the reality or the appearance <clears throat> of conduct that is not what it should be among people who are either in the government, on the prosecution side, in the U.S. Attorney's Office or whatever. Um, it is imperative that we remain, um, that we, we maintain, we keep the highest ethical standards or whatever. You know, we have to, we are always fighting to keep the public trust. And most of the time we have to fight it against uh, really reckless and sometimes uh, defamatory allegations, allegations of misconduct that, that are not of, of our own people that turn out not to be at all true, as we saw with the results in the hearing today, uh, that are used for tactical advantage. We have to fight losing trust when just those allegations are made. You know, uh, a veteran assistant U.S. attorney, Jim Mann, who had nothing to do with this, his name is simply dragged into this cavalierly and thrown in there uh, in this pleading when, when, when he, it was, and it was done wrongfully. Um, one of the reasons I want to make sure, it is important to me to make sure that you, the press, and the public you serve and we serve understands this, that they can understand that, yes, Sal did acknowledge that he is, in fact, the person because we don't want to hide from that. Uh, you have a right to know that, but also to know what's not so, that, that in fact, the other person who was implicated was wrongly implicated. The problem, uh, cases are, are, are relatively easy to do. Again, we've never publicly acknowledged <laughs> investig whether, you know, confirmed or denied whether certain things are under investigation. So, again, I think you will, you will, you should, as a journalist, should be comfortable with what answer you derive if, if you believe any of these things were commented on. You can assure that, that he'll be off of it. Um, and again, you know, we, uh, I've been here a long time. I've been with the Department of Justice since 1982. I've seen its processes. I am proud of this department. I'm proud to work for this Attorney General, this Deputy Attorney General, and, and these guys um, are, and, and all the people in the department do a thorough job in making sure that we do our jobs right, but that every, these things are judged and investigated fairly. Um, we will, uh, I'm counting on that. I know that's gonna happen. Again, I, I ask for your indulgence because I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I just don't want to do anything to prejudice that process up here at this podium, and I'm determined not to. Look, I've seen I've seen people make comments that that maybe weren't appropriate or authorized under various circumstances. You know, the electronic. Age is something I'm not probably adapted to that well. I don't, I don't read comments or blogs unless somebody prints them out and shows them to me. Um, so, and and and, but I've, and there have been cases in other offices we've seen historically where things like this have occurred. Uh, I'll tell you what I don't think. I'll answer that question, but I think in a way that maybe that you're not anticipating. You don't see these things much because. Because missteps 
inappropriate statements and handling of things by prosecutors, federal prosecutors is really rare. And it's rare at all of any kind. And so you don't see us up here with things like that very much because our people are really good and they really do their best to, to I think, stay well within the myriad guidelines and regulations that we have to follow, and I'm very proud of all of them. And how long was Sal Bell with us? Wow. Sal, uh, was, Sal was originally uh, a, a local police officer, NOPD. He was an FBI special agent. Uh, he uh, came to this office, I want to say, probably in 20, he's been here about 20 years. I mean, I, I don't want to make a swipping statement like that, probably not, but I mean, I, I, don't, I, I, I want to be very careful that, that I don't, you know, unqualifiedly just say something off the cuff because, you know, Murphy's Law is very real. You know, I'll say it and then I'll be wrong, right? In light of everything that you just announced, you're appointed by the two men in the wall behind I serve at the pleasure of the President of the United States, and I'm proud to do it. I don't, I have to, I have so many more things to worry about. There's so much more important than, than whether or not I, you know, I, I serve down the road. I hope that the President and the Attorney General uh, and most of all the people find me worthy of service, of ser public service. Um, the best thing I can do is, again, you know, we don't always, we don't, we don't, we don't deal these cards. Sometimes we just got to play them. And, uh, I think we run a pretty tight ship here, and I think we have some pretty wonderful people here. I think we've achieved some amazing things here. And that's not thanks to me. That's thanks to some wonderful folks. And so um, all I can do is hope that uh, that I don't let anybody down myself, And because uh, and I'm sure my people very, very rarely do. Mr. Redden, prior to the motion to file on the civil court and prior to the trial court hearing the motion to on Tuesday, have you heard of these block comments? Is there any inquiry? All I can say is that the first time any inquiry occurred or any admission or any question was posed, any admission occurred, that was the other day. And that's the first time we knew. You know, I, don't, I can't speculate about what people may have thought or speculated. And I'm not going to go into the, the, the fine points of, of that sort of thing. I will tell you this, that our statement here is absolutely accurate. And I was, and I'll tell you, for, for one, I'll tell you, I was surprised to find out that this was the case. Commissioner, a lot of people that could follow the question are definitely overly paraphrased. Why did you choose not to accuse him from all cases, not to have him go on paid leave or something like that? You know, we, the department may, may make different decisions. We thought it appropriate. Because remember, this is a case involving allegations of making improper, allegedly making improper comments in on cases, not mishandling evidence or or anything else. And so we believe that the that the scope of the recusal fits the scope of the the, the conduct, and we try to tailor that, you know. Uh, and so we don't we don't use nuclear weapons to address tactical situations. Um, but we'll do whatever the department tells us to do. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Boy, it's lonely up there when you're by your, you know, I'm usually surrounded by